So again, if you want to know what the um, division would be, the remainder would be if you divided by x minus c, just plug in c. If you want to know uh, if something is a factor, plug in c. If you get 0, it's a factor. So if your factor is, or your potential factor, is of the form x minus c, um, using synthetic division is a really good option because it's just going to work out nicely. And in uh, the part one video, we discussed um, our synthetic and our long division. Um, you can use either method. Um, this is relying a little bit more on the um, synthetic division when, when possible. Now, um, so let's look. So here's kind of everything kind of in, in, in one little thing. If R is the remainder after um, synthetic division, when dividing by X minus C, the following statements are true. R is the value of F of C, which we talked about in the remainder theorem. If R equals zero, then x minus c is a factor. We talked about in the factor theorem. If r equals 0, then c comma 0 must be an x-intercept of a graph. We also called those zero. So if the remainder is 0 when you plug in c, then the graph hits um, the x-axis at c. And then finally, if r equals 0, th then x equals c is a solution to f of x equals 0, which is what we knew about zeros in the first place. Now, kind of another piece of the puzzle that they'll talk about is they will use the terminology synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution is just plugging in C or finding F of C. And that C goes with that potential factor X minus C. But if they say use synthetic substitution, all they really want you to do is plug in the C that matches the quantity X minus C. If they don't directly give you that C, um, to find C, just set X minus C equal to zero and solve for X. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how they would, you know, ask for you to use synthetic substitution. So if they would say, uh, find f of c when c equals negative 2 for the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. They might even say, use synthetic substitution to find f of c. It is as simple as what we learned about functions. So we're just going to take and plug in our C of negative 2. So it isn't anything more fabulous or spectacular than that. So you're just going to take wherever your X's are, you're going to substitute in negative 2. and you're going to algebraically simplify it. Be careful when you're plugging in negatives that you follow your rules um, of order of operations so you don't screw up the signs. You know, remember this negative 2 inside that square means that the negative is squared as well as the 2. And so technically that becomes a positive 4. 
And then remember on this piece here, that negative 2 distributes to the negative 7, making that a positive 14. And then our plus 3 there makes our answer 25. So that's all they really mean when they say synthetic substitution. So let's look at example 6a. It says she used the factor theorem to determine if x minus 5 and x plus 5 are factors of this function. And use the binomials that are factors to write a factored form. So what they mean by that is first let's check, is x minus 5 a factor? Well, the first thing we have to discover, what's our c? So we've done that before many times with with binomials that we've discussed that c value. So remember, x minus 5 equals 0 when x is equal to 5. So our c value is 5. So we're just going to plug in 5 into our function. So it's going to be 5 cubed minus 18 times 5 squared plus 60 times 5 plus 25. So we're just going to follow order of operations. We're going to use that substitution. And we're going to simplify down. And we are looking to get an answer of 0. So when we uh, simplify that down, we get 0. So that tells me that x minus 5 is a factor that divides evenly into that particular f of x. So it's a factor. So that means that I can divide it out evenly as I go through this entire process. It will divide out without a remainder because that's technically our remainder. So let's go ahead and uh, let's actually divide it out. So I'm going to use synthetic division since it's just such a nice uh, form. Our x minus 5 goes with synthetic division nicely. Remember what we do. We're going to put 5 in the corner. That's where the 5 comes from. We're going to write the coefficients down of our function, making sure that no um, power is missing. There's no term that is missing. So our coefficients are 1, negative 18, 60 and 25. I'm going to set up my synthetic division box. So between the last two, I'm going to put a bar that's about three times as, as long as the, the row there. I'm going to leave a little space. Now, there are lots of ways to set up a synthetic division, but that's the way I kind of do it. And then I put an arrow under the first coefficient to remind me to bring that down. That will also remind me that my power was an x cubed. It's going to go down one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually do the math involved. So we are going to um, multiply the 5 and the 1, write it down, add them up. Multiply the 5 and the negative 13, write it down, add them up. Multiply the 5 and the negative 5, write it down, and add them up. This is our remainder. We should have realized that from before that that's our remainder because our synthetic substitution also told us that we should get a remainder of zero. If we don't get a remainder of zero, that tells you that you, you, know, you did not do something correct either in your initial substitution or you possibly didn't do something correct in your uh, synthetic division. Now, let's look at what we have. We started out here with an x cubed. Our power has dropped down by 1. So now we have an x squared minus 13x minus 5. I'm going to call that new and improved littler function, let's call it g of x. Now, remember what they asked us in the, in the initial problem. In the initial problem, they said to us, they said, hey, determine if x minus 5 and x plus 5 are factors. 
We checked the x minus 5. We found it was a factor, so we divided it out. But we haven't checked the x plus 5. So that's our next step. Well, why not check it in that new and improved littler function? Because that's the one we have to work with. And so now we're going to check the x plus 5, which means x plus 5 equals 0 when x equals negative 5. So we are going to plug that into our new and improved function. And so we get negative 5 squared minus 13 times negative 5 minus 5. Well, that's 25. plus 65 minus 5. It is not a factor. Now, what's really great about our g function is our g function is a binomial. We can try to hope to see if we can break it apart into factors anyway. Because remember, they want us to put our final answer in factored form. There is no way for the factors of negative 5 that are hanging off on the end here to add up to 13. Think of the factors of 5 are only 5 and 1. 5 and 1 only add up to 6 or subtract to 4. They're never going to give us a 13. So um, if they want it in factored form, our original function in factored form is the x minus 5 we took out times the x squared minus 13 x minus 5 that is left. We cannot factor that back piece further. Now, if they wanted us to find all of the real zeros, so if they changed their language and they said find the zeros, the zeros are not given in that. That is the factors. The zeros we find by using division or possibly the quadratic formula. So watch how they've asked the question. If they say, what are the factors? You're done. If they say, what are the zeros? You may have to go further and use some algebra to go to the next step. Okay? Here's example 6b. Let's practice this again. It says, use the factor theorem to determine if the binomials are factors of f of x. And we're going to use the binomials that are factors to write f of x in factored form. Now, so what we're going to do, we're going to take our x plus 2. We're going to find the c value by setting it equal to 0. We're going to plug that into our function so we know what our remainder would be if we decided to divide. If we plug in negative 2, we get 4 times negative 2 cubed minus 9 times negative 2 squared minus 19 times negative 2 plus 30. And we get 0. So we know that this is a factor. That means that it divides into the original polynomial evenly. So as soon as you find one, stop and let's divide it out. Now you can use synthetic division, long division, any type of division that you feel comfortable. I'm going to use synthetic again. I'm going to put negative 2 in the corner. I'm going to write down my coefficients, making sure that no powers are missing. If a power is missing, I'm going to put a 0. It's going to go 4, negative 9, negative 19, 30. I'm going to put my line between my last two. I'm going to put a little space. I'm going to put plus. I'm going to drop my 4 down with an arrow. And then I'm going to proceed with my actual math. So remember what you do. We multiply negative 2 and 4. 
negative 2 times 4. We write it down, add them up. We multiply negative 2 times negative 17. Write it down, add them up. Multiply negative 2 times 15. Write it down, add them up. We better get a zero remainder right there because that's what this told us right here. We did. Yay. Now, think about what's left. Now, our original function they called f. So I'm going to call this new function g. Our original was a cube, so that means this 4 here starts with 1 less. It starts with a squared, so it's going to be 4x squared minus 17x plus 15. Okay, and now we can check the next one. So we already checked x plus 2. It was good to go. So now we are going to check x minus 3. So how do we do that? Well, we take our x minus 3. We set it equal to 0. We solve for x. That is what we are going to plug in. And why not plug it into the smaller version? We already got that bigger version cut down a little bit. Let's put it into the smaller version. So we get 4 times 9 minus 17 times 3 plus 15. Guess what? We get that to be 0. So that means that x minus 3 is a factor. So that means it can divide out evenly. So we can put 3 in the corner. We're going to use this polynomial right there, that smaller version. They have the coefficients right in that bottom section of our original division for negative 17, 15. We're going to put our box the way we need it. We're going to put an arrow under the 4, bring down the 4, make it a plus sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our algebra. So remember, we multiply the 3 and the 4. We write it down. We add those up. Negative, 15, or negative 17 and 12 is negative 5. Now we multiply the 3 and the negative 5. We get negative 15. We should get a 0, which we do. So now put our x's back in. Remember, this was an x squared, so this one now is just an x. So it is 4x minus 5. So then let's write our factored form. Our f of x should include the factor we found first, x plus 2, the factor we found next, x minus 3, and the remaining factor that was the answer to our final division. So f of x would be x plus 2 times x minus 3 times 4x minus 5. That is your factored form. Now those are not your zeros. Your zeros are at negative 2, at positive 3, and at 5 fourths. But those right there in green are your factors. So those are your factored form of your polynomial. You could check that you are correct by multiplying it all out. You should get the original f of x function. So, um, we've got this function, and we want to factor it completely if x minus 5 is a factor as well as 3x minus 1. Now, let's take a look at our x minus 5. If x minus 5 is a factor, we know that x minus 5 equals 0 when x is equal to 5. So um, we already know that f of 5 is 0. They didn't uh, need us to check it. 
They've said the words, it is a factor. Okay? So that means that if we did want to take the time and plug in uh, 5, we would get uh, 0. But it's a factor already. We know it's a factor, so now let's just divide it out. Let's take our uh, original f of x and factor it out. Look at what we've got. We've got a fourth power polynomial here. A fourth power polynomial, we've got to take it down to a third, then to a second. We really have to break it down four times, um, hopefully. Okay. So let's do our synthetic division. We're going to get our 5 in the corner, our factors of 3, negative 22, 13, 118, and negative 40. Between our last two, put your bar, put your uh, addition bar, bring down your 3. Okay, so let's go to 10. So we're going to multiply the 5 and the 3, that's going to be 15. Add them up, that's negative 7. We're going to multiply the 5 and the negative 7, that's negative 35. Write it down, add them up, that is negative 22. We're going to multiply 5 and negative 22. That's negative 110. That's going to be 8. We're going to multiply 5 and 8 and get 40. We have to get that 0 remainder in that corner. If we uh, don't, you got to check your division. Now, let's think about something for a minute. This function right here is going to start with a cube because our original function was a fourth power. So our new function, I'm going to call it g, is x, 3x cubed, second, I'm going to fix that, 3x cubed minus 7x squared minus 22x plus 18. Now we want it in factored form. Factoring a cubic is never usually a fun thing to, to do. Oh, I'm sorry, plus 8. Um, it's never really a fun thing to do. So um, let's take the factor 3x minus 1 um, that they mentioned and let's take it out. Now the problem with using um, synthetic division on that 3x minus 1 is the 3. Remember, uh, in, if you watched part 1, part 1 video, we had one that had a, maybe it was a 2 or 4, and we had to divide it all out, and it was kind of gross. So this is a one time where I kind of would stray away from synthetic division, and I am going to use long division. And I'm going to get... Um, you know, just a, a, a squared function instead of a cubed. So 3x, you know, remember how we do it, 3x, compare that with 3x cubed. I'm going to multiply that by an x squared. I'm going to multiply by both pieces in the front. Distribute to both pieces. I'm subtracting, so I change the sign of both. I combine like terms. I bring down the next piece. I again ask myself how many times does 3x go into negative 6x squared? That's negative 2x. I multiply the negative 2x by both things out in front. I get negative 6x squared. I get positive 2x. I am subtracting, so I change the signs of both. first term goes away. The second term gives me a negative 24x. Bring down the last piece. What times 3x would give me negative 24? That would be a negative 8. That would be a negative 24x and a positive 8. But I'm subtracting, so I change the signs both, and I get my 0 remainder. Okay. So here's our final piece, x squared minus 2x minus 8. you got to ask yourself, is that a factor that can unfoil? Can it break apart into two more pieces? It can, very nicely. So let's write our final answer. f of x 
has to include our first factor of x minus 5, our second factor we took out 3x minus 1, and then the factored form of x squared minus 2x minus 8, which is x minus 4 times x plus 2. And that is the original function factored as much as possible. Okay? So that's really the only examples we needed for uh, this second part. Here is the homework that goes with um, this assignment. For problems one through four, um, they just want you to use long division. They have given you the factor that needs to be divided out. Examples 12 through 16, they've given you two functions. They want you to use long division. 20 through 23, they want you to use synthetic division. 31 and 32 is just synthetic substitution. That's the first thing I did today. 38 through uh, 39, that is they've given you some factors. They want you to determine whether or not they are factors, and if they are, take them out. And then 53 is just kind of an interesting one for you to think about.